Good morning, everyone. Great day here. It's overcast. It rained, more or less, through the night. Everything got watered. Yeah, right. We have perfect weather here. Let's get just started. I'm excited. We're in a new book, and it's called The Book of Judges. Let's see what it says here in a foreword first. The book covers the two centuries of Israel's history between, so two centuries, that's 200 years, between the settlement in Canaan and the beginning of monarchy. As the first chapter shows, Israel was not in a position of strength. The tribes were struggling to establish themselves against the settled powers in the land. They were fragmented and disunited, constantly under attack from outside. Later tradition represents Israel neatly as 12 federated and fraternal tribes descended from Jacob's 12 sons, but at this time even the names and identity of the group seem still to be fluid. Deborah's call to arms certainly produces no concerted action. No, well, there you go. The judges themselves are charismatic figures inspired by the spirit of Yahweh either as leaders in war or as authorities to guide some section of the people in peace. They are very varied. Some, I bet you that sounded funny. Some have wide influence. Others are territorially very restricted. Some appear only for a moment. Others almost found a dynasty. One... Samson seems to have been little more than a legendary strong man drawing his strength from Yahweh and using it to taunt the Philistines. Towards the end of the period, the growing power of the Philistines and the disunited anarchy within Israel showed that the time is ripe for a more stable rule. In this varied material, the Deuteronom Deuteronomic editor sees a repeated fourfold pattern. Infidelity to Yahweh leads to punishment until Israel repents and turns to Yahweh, of which he delivers them through a charismatic leader. The religious lesson of the history is this constant failure and return to which Yahweh equally constantly replies. All right, here we go. The Book of Judges. First introduction. Ooh, that's a long one. Let's get started right away. Summary of the settlement in Canaan. The settlement of Judah, Simeon, Caleb, and the Canaanites. Judges, the book of Judges 1. Now after Joshua's death, the Israelites consulted Yahweh asking, which of us is to march on the Canaanites first? to make war on them. And Yahweh replied, Judah is to march on them first. I am delivering the country into his hands. Judah then said to his brother Simeon, march with me into the territory allotted to me. We shall make war on the Canaanites. And then I, in my turn, shall march into your territory with you. And Simeon marched with him. So Judah marched on them and Yahweh delivered the Canaanites and Parasites into their hands and they defeated them at Bezek, ten thousands of them. At Bezek they came upon Adani Pezek, Bezek. They joined battle with him and defeated the Canaanites and Parasites. Adoni Bezek took to fight, flight, but they chased and captured him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Adoni Bezek said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to pick up the crumbs under my table. As I did, God does to me. He was taken to Jerusalem, there he died. The sons of Judah attacked Jerusalem and took it. They put its people to the sword and set fire to the city. After this, the sons of Judah went down to make war on the Canaanites who were living in the highlands, the Negeb and the lowlands. Judah next marched on the Canaanites living in Hebron. The name of Hebron in olden days was Kiriat Arba, and beat Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai. From there he marched on the inhabitants of Debir. The name of Debir in olden days was Kiriat Sefer. Caleb said, 
To the man who conquers and captures Kiryat Sefer, I shall give my daughter Achsa as wife. The man who captured it was Othniel, son of Kenaz, younger brother of Caleb, who gave him his daughter Achsa as wife. When she arrived, he urged her to ask her father for arable land. But when she alighted from the donkey and Caleb asked her, what is the matter? She said to him, grant me a blessing as the land you have given me as the Negev. Give me springs of water too. So Caleb gave her what she wanted, the upper springs and the lower springs. We've already read this. <clears throat> I thought this was all happening still during Joshua's time. But here it says now after Joshua's death. Okay. Well, uh, these accounts are so confusing. Mm -hmm. The sons of Hohab, the Kenite, father-in-law of Moses, marched up with the sons of Judah from the city of palm trees into the desert of Judah, lying in the Negev of Arad, where they went and settled among the people. Judah then set out with his brother Simeon. They beat the Canaanites who lived in Sephat and delivered it over to the curse of destruction. Hence the town was given the name of Hormah. Judah then captured Gaza and its territory, Ashkelon and its territory, Ekron and its territory, and Yahweh was with Judah, <clears throat> who made himself master of the highlands. He could not, however, dispossess the inhabitants of the plain since they had iron chariots. As Moses had directed, Hebron was given to Caleb, and he drove the three sons of Anak out of it. As regards the Jebusites living in Jerusalem, the sons of Benjamin did not dispossess them, and the Jebusites have been living in Jerusalem with the sons of Benjamin ever since. Wait a minute, what did it just say over here? Uh, here, here, but here it says the sons of Judah attacked Jerusalem, took it. They put its people to the sword and set fire to the city. In the same chapter it says as regards to Jebusites living in Jerusalem, the sons of Benjamin did not dispossess them and the Jebusites have been living in Jerusalem with the sons of Benjamin ever since. The capture of Bethel. <laughs> Similarly, the house of Joseph marched on Bethel, and Yahweh was with them. The house of Joseph made a reconnaissance of Bethel. In olden days, the name of the town was Lutz. The scout saw a man coming out of the town and said to him, Show us how to get into the town, and we shall show you faithful love. And when he had shown them a way into the town, they put the town to the sword, but let the man and his whole clan go. The man went off to the country of the Hittites and built the town, which he called Lutz, and that has been its name ever since. Huh. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'm just reading... Uh, I'm just, uh, I just, I seem to be just reading the same thing over again. I've already read before. So what is there to say again? Except for, this is very confusing. The northern tribes, Manasseh did not dispossess Beth Sheon and its dependencies, nor Tanakh and its dependencies, nor the inhabitants of Dor and its dependencies, nor the inhabitants of Ibleam and its dependencies, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and its dependencies. In those parts, the Canaanites held their ground. But when the Israelites became stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor, although they did not dispossess them. Nor did Ephraim dispossess the Canaanites living in Gezer. Thus the Canaanites went on living in Gezer with him. Sebalun did not dispossess the inhabitants of Kitron or of Nahalol. The Canaanites lived on with Sebalun but were subjected, subjected to forced labor. Asher did not dispossess the inhabitants of Akko, nor those of Sidon, of Mahalab, of Achzib, of Helba, of Abhek, or of Rehab. 
So the Asherites lived among the Canaanite inhabitants of the country, not having dispossessed them. Naphtali did not dispossess the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh or of Beth Anat. They settled among the Canaanite inhabitants of the country. But the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anat were subjected to forced labor for them. The Amorites drove the Danites back into the highlands and would not let them come down into the plain. Oh. The Amorites held their ground at Har Heres and Shalbim, but when the hand of the house of Joseph grew heavier, they were subjected to forced labor. The territory of the Edomites begins at the ascent of scorpions, runs to the rock, and continues on upwards. That's the first one, the book of Judges. Wow, I feel deflated. So excited to start a new book. Well, more of the same. <coughs> I remember in Joshua they would talk about the uh, the surrounding places of the towns that they came across, you know, trying to take over, and they inherited everything. They called it, uh, and their land, uh, what, what, what did they call it? I can't remember now. They seem to be using different words for the surrounding little villages and whatever went with it, the, the uh, uh, acreage for farm and farming farming lands right yes and the farming lands so and it sounds like that to me it just sounds like that the israelites just came and settled where there was room right yes and yet somehow well, because god was involved it had to sound more than that Ugh, i can't I don't know. I have no idea what actually went on there. <laughs> just odd. It's just odd. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I had, I didn't sleep at all last night in a way. I had no idea what went on. <laughs> and one thing came up where more or less spirit world asks so what what would you consider or if you were asked rather what would you consider the most impressive give and take that you had with us spirit world oh mm. and uh I would have to say that it's not even something that's all that, I guess one could say, impressive. Yet, to me, it was an amazing moment when I got to see <coughs> the inside of my heart, spiritual heart, not the physical heart. It didn't even look like a physical heart, but a spiritual heart. And it was during a prayer circle at a healing seminar where you learned, right? yes, you learned the pendulum and yeah, that kind of stuff, which was interesting too. I took that completely in a different direction. I, I, mm, I'm always more in favor, right? for people to pick up that task on their own, 
right, to work on their spiritual life, not have someone else do it for them. That is maybe more in tune with spirit world. I think that the information given to people uh, about it, you know, this is probably something you need to work on because that's what I see around you. Right? Is that's a good, that's a good thing. So I was in this prayer circle and ugh, I stood there and went, ugh, gosh. It was all women, about 20 of them in this prayer circle. They were all praying and then, ugh, I don't feel like doing this. <laughs> I really didn't. And the just, I, prayer to me is an all, it, it's a 24 7 thing where prayer is always in my heart to mind about all and everything it's there is no specific time uh, for me really when it comes down to it where oh you set that aside for prayer or if it's needed okay let's say a prayer for me it is just a ongoing always it's always there that world always around me within me in every aspect so prayer to me, even at that time, it's like, ugh, what is this? What are these people doing? What are these women doing? And what are they praying for? And I didn't want to hear it. And it was just, ugh, oh, give me some place to go. <laughs> On my own. And in my mind's eye, this, It's like the shape of an oval with points and it just opened up and there were like these, it looked as if because of the colors, these crusts, these darker crusts were on the outside and as it went in and it just went in like this, it became brighter and stronger and uh, it was like this just whoa, <laughs> it was just depth of of something and I'm just standing there and and I'm I'm delving into it I mean I really just delved right into this space and uh, was blown away just mesmerized blown away I couldn't even I wasn't thinking anything I was, I was just experiencing the depth of this this <laughs> cocoon somehow in a way that you got to see the inside and how far and deep it went and on how clear it became and the, and it literally felt like there was this it wasn't just light that was way in there just pulsating out it was like this fire as well and it was but it wasn't heat it looked just like fire but it wasn't heat it was just all the colors were there but it wasn't heat i don't know how long that went on and After that, the interesting thing, so that went on for some time. I said, I have no idea how long it went on. Suddenly I realized that everybody had stopped praying. I was still in the space somehow and had to come out of it, I had to pull myself out of it. Really amazing experience. Again, given by spirit world, you know, here standing there going, ugh, what are these women all praying for? I so couldn't care less in no way. <laughs> and I don't want to do it. Not like that didn't want to do it like that. Do I have to be a rebel over everything? Yeah, I don't know, it's just how it is. Gained this amazing experience. And I knew it was my heart. I knew it, that it was my heart. And it was beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. What resided within my heart the possibilities that were there in my heart. Already, it was already there. I just had to reach it, yes? Yeah. 
After that, though I know where my heart lies, I often kept putting my hand when it came to my heart in the wrong side. And it would even hurt on the wrong side right? when it came to my physical body. Right? And I uh, didn't notice that for the longest time afterwards right? until suddenly one, I remember one night I was laying in bed, my heart hurt so bad over something. No doubt children in the world again, you know, just <sighs> how anyone can hurt a child I'm not getting, I just don't get it, I don't, I don't understand it. And even as a collective sin on how we hurt children, I just don't understand. I don't understand how that's possible. I'm not getting it. I, where, that, and I laid there and my heart hurt. It just hurt. I realized that's the wrong side of my heart, uh, in, in my physical body. That's, that's the wrong side. That's not where my heart lies. And that was years and years later, after that experience that I had in this workshop, and I realized that, wow, what an affirmation of we don't just exist in the physical, but also the spiritual, right? Yes? Uh, what did I say? How the possibilities within our heart, it's all already there. It's all there. We have to just reach it, right? Yes? Uh, anyway, so thinking back every time to that experience, in a way, uh, that was probably the most illuminating the most amazing spiritual experience that I've had in all my life. And I had, oh my gosh, I could probably write a Bible about that. All these experiences. I'm zoning out again. Ah, this has been happening a lot. I wonder what's going on out in the world. Something's going on. I don't know, don't know what it is, but I see a lot of good things. A lot of good people who are worrying and trying to bring light to things happening to people in the world that shouldn't exist. They just shouldn't. Yes. What about in the book of Judges, that first chapter? Just that, that shouldn't exist. That should not have existed. The way that the Israelites, right, supposedly, right, supposedly, is it true? Just ransacked through other people. I can't see God approving of that. Uh, I would also say that if the first thing that they mention is uh, Joshua uh, has passed away, and now, and okay, and, uh, seems like it went right on again or continued on with uh, war and slaughtering people and I don't know what. But it doesn't say who stepped into the footsteps of Joshua. Who's the leader there now, in a way? But what does it say? Monarchy. Okay, so. Mm, that. What does God say to them? Continuously don't have any other gods right, before me. You think he was just talking about the idols out of stone and bronze that, that some others pray to, right? This, that, that wasn't God. Well, it sounds like there were a lot of the people there who actually did believe in the one God, right? Mm, that weren't the Israelites. There was one that was there was one thing that the Israelites didn't have, and that was a king, kings. Right? 
Whereas with all the other people outside of the Israelites, their leaders were always regarded as what? And not once, interesting they mentioned that one king had got the thumbs and the toes, big toes cut up. And the realization of that king, yep, I've had a lot of kings, kings, not people, kings, not his people, kings, other kings under me that I did that to. Who then had to serve me? Realize that, and this is now. Now I'm I'm in the same situation. I kind of realized. Did he repent? Was taken to uh, what did I say? Jerusalem and died there. Hmm. That's an interesting little blurb right there. A new one in a way, right? Yes. But it states right in the beginning, the monarchy. Now the talk of the monarchy among the Israelites is starting to happen. And something's going to go on there. And so what did they do? Right there. Veering away from God and establishing their own king. What do most people do with kings and queens and emperors and empresses? And, uh, uh, what did they do around the world? They were... Regarded as what? The son of the sons of heaven. Right? The kings and the emperors, the sons of heaven. They could do no wrong. Their word stood, right? Once they said, gave an edict, I think that's what it's called. <clears throat> then that couldn't be retracted. Well, what does that sound like? That's godlike behavior, right? As if they were gods. And their word stood. Their existence stood. Yes. So the Israelites slowly were falling backwards again. Or started to break the first, the second commandment of God. Uh, sure sounds like that. I often think around the world of the commoners, commoners not just the people who go to work and make it possible for all these governments to even exist, right? And uh, on how, in a way, all around the world we're the same. We are still the same. Right? Yes. What do we do? What do we try to do? We try to just survive. A lot of in a lot of places, you just tried to survive. Under the yoke of what? <laughs> I thought we got rid of the feudal systems a long time ago. But that's not really true, is it? It just looks a bit different. <laughs> different words we have, right? Yes. Also, often, who was the, the tenth, right? A portion, a portion of your uh, earnings, your crops, they all, right? Uh, your livestock at that time, now it's money right? given to God. Was it God? Who was it? Yeah. Well, anyway. I think if we would want to look at the tithing properly, God's not looking for money, he's not looking for diamonds, he's not looking for gold, he's not looking for any of that. He's not looking for plants and animals either that should pull out of the ground and you know, cut the, its throat and then you know, sacrifice that on it, whatever altar, burn it up instead of eat it. <clears throat> I don't think that's what he's looking for either when it comes to tithing. I think he's looking for a part of your heart. Right? We give our hearts out to many different things. We do. That's what we do. Depends on what we like. Right? 
truly like, yes. But that inner core of our heart, a part of that should belong to him. God, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parents, the Creator, at all times, not just on the Sabbath, not just during a prayer, at all times, that should be our tithing and throughout our whole life. And of course, that tithe is what? Giving back what? Love. We expect God to give love, right? Yes, yes, love. I want love and you know, fix things and this and that. God deserves love back. And it's within us to give it. Yes. Absolute capabilities to do so, every person in this world. So again, it comes down to what if everybody were to think that way? What would the world look like? <laughs> yes. Uh, ah, wishful thinking. But that experience, that spiritual experience with Spur Oral, showing me this open heart of mine, proves to me that everyone has that just as I do, no different, just as all of our blood runs red, our hearts, our spiritual hearts are exactly the same, never changes, just depends on how we are willing to not just receive but give, yes? So it's not just wishful thinking. It's already there. It's already all there. But just not making use of it in the proper way. That's that's all there is. Yes? Uh, did the Israelites truly make proper use of all the guidance, the Ten Commandments, the guidance given uh, by their elders, by their leaders, put in place by God? Yes. And then, ultimately, of course, everything goes back to who is the ultimate, uh, ultimate and absolute leader of the world, physical and spiritual. Should be simple to answer that question, right? Yeah. <sighs> So it, in the end, it's up to the people. It was, it's always been up to the people, always been up to the people to do right, to just do right. Nobody else to blame out there, <laughs> seen or unseen. No need to blame the past because we're no better here in the future, <laughs> in the present <laughs> future. Men did not want it, it wouldn't exist. Right? Yes. Well, there you go. All right, that's all I have to say today. Ah, oh, dear me. It's another day. I hope it won't rain anymore. It's time for a walk and a bike ride. Go out there and see what's going on. Things are growing. Oh, my uh, sis-in-law sent me some pictures of the garden. Oh, my heart. Oh, <laughs> I have to mention that. I'm not there. I planted everything. Everything was coming up great. I already ate lots of things from my garden before I left. And there's more. My son really enjoyed this. Mom, I'm just living out of your garden. It's so great. And, uh, and so my sister-in-law sent me all the pictures of the flowers. That I did plant some just for her. <laughs> 
and the vegetables and how everything was just growing and I saw the beans beans that uh, for the first time I grew this year and, oh, <laughs> and I'm not there I just oh, I miss my garden I told her I miss my garden and she must have thought what about me what about the dogs what about <laughs> I miss my garden well that's the pictures she sent right yes what was in the moment of the pictures that she sent. Oh, I have them in my mind's eye. And just yearning for my vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yearning for the goodness of my 100% organic vegetables. I even made my own dart, okay, people? <coughs> yes, created my own dart. Mmm, the richest soil you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Ah. Uh, mm. I brought a lot of it with me, too, but it's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone. Used every bit of it, too. Oh, my garden. I miss my garden. And I hope that... Uh, Yes, the people will use all the goodness coming out of it now. There'll be more by the time I get back. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. I, I get to put still a lot of it away for winter time. By the way, with the pumpkins, I think I mentioned that. Gosh, you know, who knows how long, a year ago? When did I start all this? But uh, in one, I remember in one video, I showed all the... 24, 25 pumpkins that I got from one plant in the manure pile. There's, There are more growing there, by the way, but I'm not there, so I'm not sure. I hope they're not going to mow them over or pull them because they think they're weeds or whatever. I did show them all, but yeah, so, but I'm not there. I'm going to have to just go with what, there is, what people are going to do there. And I just ate, we just ate the last one. Actually, I still have some pumpkin bread that we made in there. Uh, that's the last, of, that was the last of it. So these pumpkins lasted and stayed good. Though these, the last two I had, they did start to show some. I thought, I have to use those now. Uh, lasted all the way, almost to July. Almost uh, to July. Wow the end of June without any kind of preserving them or uh, having to do anything with them lasted almost uh, lasted definitely into the next season of vegetables to eat so I had fresh vegetables all winter long who cares if it's just pumpkins for right now you can do that with more, almost any squash squash is a great food Many of them are superfoods, so loaded with minerals and vitamins. Such good stuff. Pumpkin's also good for dogs, for worms and things like that. So I had no doubt it's great for the human system as well, right? Yes. Okay. Well, anyway. Oh, there it is. One last time. <laughs> All right. That's it. Joshua. Jo judges. Jo not Joshua, Judges. The book of Judges 1. We started a new book again in the Bible. What a rough read this all is in a way, right? Yes. Uh, maybe we all need to... Uh, Send some tithes of our heart of repentance to Israel, to be with Israel today. Yeah? For harmony and peace to start to finally be a part of that people. Yes, and the people around them. Hmm. Yeah.
God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. I know what. Talk to you another time.